Dina is a scheming, wicked woman. She was the instigator of this heinous crime committed by the other accused. My daughter's innocent. This has been a huge mistake. No stage did this accused show any sign of remorse. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me here again today. Last week we spoke about the Hannah Cornelius case and if you would like to see a video that really triggers me then I suggest you give that one a watch and I'll link it up here for you. Otherwise today's case was recommended by one of you guys so thank you very much for your recommendation. But today we're going to talk about the baby Jordan or Jordan Lee case. And this case brings us into a lot of themes. There's jealousy, there's love triangles, there's betrayal and there's murder. So if you would like to hear what happened to baby Jordan, then let's get into it. Intended for mature audiences only. Dina Rodriguez was a beautiful, driven and quite spoiled young lady. She was born in 1981 in Cape Town and she was the youngest of all of her siblings. And she had her father wrapped around her little finger. So whatever Dina wanted, Dina got. Like I said, Dina was born and raised in Cape Town. So she went to Weinberg Girls High. And after she left Weinberg, she then went to go to university. So she enrolled in a university and studied a BCom degree. While Dina was studying, she worked with her parents who owned a toy factory or a toy making business. And they would ship these toys around Cape Town and around South Africa. Dina's parents were quite strict while she was growing up. So she was not allowed any male influence while she was in school. And if she did have a boyfriend when she left school, she would need to divulge all of the information to her parents. So every time she did have a boyfriend or any kind of romantic interest, she would keep it very hush-hush from her parents. And if we skip forward a few years to 2004, this hush-hush kind of business was no different, especially when she met a man named Neil Wilson. Neil Wilson was a primary school teacher and he was apparently quite the ladies' man. Apparently, just before he met Dina and they started dating, he was dating three women at the same time. I'm not sure if they maybe knew of each other, but apparently they worked at the same Virgin Active. Maybe not at the same time, otherwise they probably would have found out about each other. But he was juggling three women at the same time. And one of these three women he had been dating for three years already. And after this whole three women kind of dating scene that Neil was in, after that all ended, he then had a very short relationship with a lady named Natasha Norton and they only dated for around two months. Anyway, back to Dina and Neil. Remember Neil was a primary school teacher and they met at a club and it was basically love at first sight. And if that is something that is real, they would be the perfect example of being completely infatuated with someone the moment you saw them. Dina and Neil were completely inseparable and Dina was apparently besotted with Neil. And remember I told you that Dina would generally keep things quite hush-hush from her parents and Neil was no different. They would go on holidays together and Dina would just lie about where she was going with Neil. But Dina and Neil were very much in love and Dina even said, quote, The relationship which I had with Neil was the first truly serious emotional and physical relationship in which I had ever been involved. I had never in my life before been so obliged to cope with intense emotions such as those with Neil whom I regard as the person destined to share my life as my partner." End quote. Then around a couple months into Dina and Neil's relationship, Neil actually gets a phone call from Natasha. Remember? So Neil's on the phone, he's talking to Natasha, and Natasha's like, oh, by the way, I'm having your baby. At first, Neil was extremely defensive, Neil's family was extremely defensive, and they denied all paternity to this baby completely. They denied that Neil was even involved with Natasha like that which is kind of a slap in the face, but they denied Neil as a father completely. Natasha was quite upset by this, but she didn't let this get to her and she decided to keep the baby. Now, after Dina had heard that Neil was fathering an illegitimate child, Dina started fuming. She was completely upset by this. She was raging at him, shouting at him, and she said, you need to fix this problem. But remember, Neil, it takes two to tango, and he now had this responsibility of a baby. But eventually, Natasha does give birth, and she says to Neil, listen, you actually need to come and have a paternity test because I want to prove to you that this baby is yours. But eventually, after a lot of huffing and puffing from Neil's side, he eventually goes down to the hospital, and he actually sees baby Jordan for the first time and he then takes a paternity test and he leaves the hospital and Natasha said that when Neil first laid eyes on Jordan he was just like okay cool where's the test let's get out of here and like I said he left and a couple days later Natasha calls Neil back and says listen buddy you actually are the father and you need to take some responsibility 
here's the positive text. So Neil and Natasha now try and figure out a kind of positive way to move forward in the sense of child support and what kind of money Neil can give to Natasha. Neil was quite frankly lowballing Natasha quite a lot and he was offering minimal money which could hardly support maybe the nappies for baby Jordan for the entire month. So obviously Natasha was quite upset by this. And this whole feud eventually ended up in a court battle between Natasha and Neil for child support for baby Jordan. While this was all going on, Neil did ask Dina to become a little more compassionate and a little more understanding about the whole situation. And he did ask her to please be supportive and loving towards baby Jordan because obviously this was a part of his life now. Dina said that she tried to cope with the idea of this illegitimate child of Neil's and she tried to put on a brave face. But Dina said that this baby had such a profound effect on her that she just couldn't handle having this baby in her life at all. Every time Dina said that she saw baby Jordan, she was overcome with this immense amount of jealousy and hatred towards this baby. Dina was completely spiraling and she said that she even had a conversation with Neil while they were kind of having a pillow talk. And she said to Neil, how much money would you pay for this problem to kind of go away? And she kept on going because she said that Neil didn't really have the reaction that she expected someone to have when talking about getting rid of a baby. Dina kind of said that Neil didn't condemn what she was saying at all. He just kind of listened and was like, yeah, you're being ridiculous, whatever. Now, after all of this pillow talk with Neil and in Dina's wisdom, she decided now that she was going to get rid of the problem. And by the way, baby Jordan was around six months old at the time. But anyway... So Dina goes to a taxi rank that is nearby her and she's kind of looking around and I don't know how she knew to approach these two men, but she approached two men and these men's names were Bongi Korsi Singwenu and Zanatemba Gwada. Bongi Korsi and Zanatemba then recruit two other men named Sipo Mufazwe and Mongezi Bobotanya. I apologize for the butchering of those names. But Dina tells them only one thing and that is that she will give them 10,000 rand if they pretend to burgle the house, but make sure that baby is the main target. So the four men decide, okay, cool, easy target, let's go to the house. So they do kind of like a drive-by once, and then they go back a second time, and Sipo and Mongezi get out, and they pretend to deliver those like yellow pages, phone book things, and they go to the door, they knock, and they give one of the ladies, who is actually Natasha's mom, in the house, the phone books. And Natasha's mom looks at them and she's like, okay, cool. And as Natasha's mom is looking at them, a boy inside the house as well, named Dylan, looks at them as well. And Dylan is Natasha's brother and he's important for later. So there's two people who see these first two men, Natasha's mom and Dylan. So they hand over the books and they're like, you know, maybe they're heavy. Can we come inside? And they both like, no, it's fine. We can take the phone books. You can leave. So their first attempt to get into baby Jordan's house was a fail. Oh, and by the way, baby Jordan lived with Natasha, who is her mom, her uncle, Dylan, who's Natasha's brother, and Natasha's parents. Baby Jordan also had a nanny who was named Tobega, and she lived inside the house as well. So the four men then leave the house, and they go back to Dina and say, listen, the first attempt was a fail. You need to come up with another plan because they're not letting us in the house. Dina's like, okay, cool. I work at a place that ships packages everywhere. Why don't I pretend that a package is going to be delivered to the Norton's household? So Dina comes up with a plan and she decides that she's going to call the Norton's over and over again to say that there's a surprise package. Some person has delivered something for you. Expect a package on the 15th of June, 2005. So the Norton's are like, okay, cool. They're expecting a package. So on the 15th of June, 2005, the four men get into a vehicle and they drive over with a package and a wavel that was given to them from Dina. And they then head over to the Norton's household. So the four men rock up at the Norton household and Bongin Corsi gets out of the car and he knocks on the front door because Sipo and Mongezi were worried that someone in the house might recognize them from prior when they were delivering the yellow pages so they wanted Bongi and Corsi to go in because maybe no one would recognize so Bongi and Corsi knocks on the door he has the package and the wave in his hand and Dylan opens the door remember Natasha's brother and baby Jordan's uncle so Dylan opens the door and he's like okay cool he's been expecting this package so he lets Bongi and Corsi in and after he signs the wave the three other men come charging into the house they hold Dylan down they gag him and they tie him up 
Then they see Baby Jordan's nanny, who is Tobeja. They grab her and they tie them back to back. And then the four men proceed to find Baby Jordan. Then I'm not sure why they did this, but they asked the youngest of all of the men, who I think was only 16 or 17 years old at the time, Bongin Corsi. So he goes into the bedroom, he puts Baby Jordan on the bed, and he's looking down at her, and she looks up at him. She starts playing and fidgeting on the bed smiling and he says like he can't do it because baby jordan reminds him too much of his younger brother so mongezi is obviously getting impatient and he comes in storms into the room bongin Kosi, what are you taking so long for why is this taking so long he then pushes him out of the way takes a knife puts it straight through her neck here and then he proceeds to let her bleed out basically the men then proceeded to leave the bedroom they grabbed whatever they thought was valuable they tore up some drawers to make it look more like a burglary but they didn't really take much and then they proceeded to leave the house and they then got into a taxi they called dina and said the job is done while the men left dylan was able to get free of his restraints he then ran to baby jordan's room he saw that she was not all right he ran into the street and he then tried to call for help. Neighbors heard that he was screaming and pleading and they called an ambulance. But unfortunately, when the ambulance eventually got to the Norton's household, it was a little too late. So this is where things get a little bit weird. After everything had been done, Dina then goes back to the taxi rank to pay the men. But instead of the 10,000 rand that she promised, she only paid them 5,000 rand. And she said that the rest will come at a later stage. So while Dina is then leaving the taxi rank, she calls up Neil and says, guess what? She was so excited. She's like, you can't believe what just happened. I got rid of our problem. And Neil is like, what problem? What are you talking about? And Dina's like, no, I got rid of Jordan. You don't have to worry about her anymore. And Neil is obviously shocked. He's like, what are you talking about? What have you done? Explain. And Dina then explains what happened. And he was upset about it. But he only took four days to report her after that phone call to the police. And remember, Neil obviously knew exactly what was happening because Natasha, I assume, called him to let them know that their baby had now passed away. So I don't understand why it then took four days for him to put two and two together to then call the police. But once Neil actually reports Dina to the police, the police then went to arrest Dina on suspicion of murder and then they continued to look through her house and then they went to her place of business. But while Dina was in custody, she was like, oh, I'll get away with it. They have nothing on me. They have no DNA. They have no connection to this murder. So I'll be fine. As long as the others don't talk, I'll be fine. Now, the police also got a tip off about these four men because all of a sudden they had a lot of money. They had a lot of new things that they've never had before. And police went to have a look at their houses and they found a connection between what the Nortons had reported missing to what was in these guys houses so they brought all four of them in then three of the men after they had been in custody for a little bit started talking and confessing about what happened and what dina had asked them to do so dina was now incorporated and tied to baby jordan's case and then eventually all five of them went on trial during trial a lot of people actually defended dina and said that she was friendly she was loving she was definitely very fond of children which i kind of find a little ironic but then the prosecution started bringing out the cold hard evidence and there was some evidence firstly there was the constant phone calls between the four of these men and dina and also from her workplace and speaking of her workplace, remember that waybill that she had forged to give to the Nortons? Well, firstly, there was her fingerprints all over it, there was her handwriting all over it, and there was also a connection that Telcom connected to her constantly phoning the Norton from her place of work. Dina and Mongezi, who actually murdered Jordan, were the only people who kept quiet throughout the whole trial. So after all the evidence had been given, Sipo and Mongezi had been given life sentences for the murder of Jordan Lee, and the other two men were given 20 years behind bars. Dina Rodriguez was sentenced to life in prison, and Dina continued to study in prison and actually got a degree in education, which I also find ironic. But while she was graduating, she met a man named Rion, who was also graduating, but was also in prison for murdering two teenagers. So was this a match made in prison? But not much was said after the trial about Neil Wilson. He went quite 
quiet afterwards. I do find it interesting that he was very supportive of Dina Rodriguez in the beginning, even though he knew exactly what had happened. But all of a sudden during the trial, he kind of flipped pages and he was no longer supporting Dina. And he eventually just backed off completely and went completely AWOL and no one really knows where or who he is anymore. I also find it quite interesting to listen to this case and was Neil Wilson using Dina Rodriguez to get rid of the problem that he thought Baby Jordan was because I find it completely suspicious that he did not call the police straight away after Dina confessed to what she had kind of conspired against Baby Jordan. Maybe Dina was so blinded by love that she's completely defending Neil in this or maybe Neil is actually innocent and he didn't have anything to do with baby Jordan's murder. We will never know. But that is the Dina Rodriguez case. What a whirlwind. But thank you for the suggestions. Keep them coming because a lot of the suggestions I have never heard of before or I have completely forgotten. So don't forget to let me know what case you would prefer me to do down below. And I'll definitely look into them. Thank you for all your support and all your kindness. And I'll see you again next week. Bye.